Hey guys and ladies, in this video what I'm going to show you how to do is how to install a Windows operating system from a USB flash drive and I'm going for this particular video the netbook that I'm going to be using is the Asus EEE PC 1001PX but this should work for most of the EEE PC family of netbooks. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you should have your USB flash drive already plugged into your computer as well as the Windows installation disk and once you have that finished you need to download a piece of software that I will include into the description or on my website uh, when set up from USB so just double click on that once you have it installed and click yes if you're using Windows 7 and something to note here this should work on Windows XP as well and if you get this pop up here, just ignore it. It's just telling you that NTFS improves a lot for the file copying. It's a lot faster, but for me, I'm just going to use what worked for me. So, all right. And something I forgot to mention here is where you see USB disk selection. Make sure you select the right USB that you want to install the Windows installation data on. So just make sure you do this. Usually, this software selects that for you automatically but if it doesn't be sure you do search for your USB drive right now my USB flash drive is in fat format and the first thing you want to do here is format the USB disk in case yours isn't already so normally you can keep everything up here the same you can give it a volume label I'm just gonna keep mine the same and you want to select XP bootable not sure if you had to do this or not but again I'm just doing what worked for me and just again just make sure everything on the screen screen matches yours so then we want to click on prepare drive and then click on OK and click OK again And give it a moment and once you come back to the screen and a command prompt exits it, you can exit this and now what we need to do is select the source to our Windows installation disk so usually for most it's the D drive but here I have it in a DVD RW drive and I want to click OK and let that load up so in a second here you should see a D or the letter of the drive that you have the installation disk in and everything else here you can just leave the same make sure this says removable and again just make sure your screen looks exactly like mine here so once you do that just click on go and you should get a pop-up hopefully you do get a pop-up in case some of you guys do There we go. So, oops, get that back. If you see this pop up, ignore it. Just click OK. But if you don't click anything, it should just automatically click OK for you. So, after that, I mean, it, it may take a couple of minutes to complete this process. So, I'm just going to really just stop the video here and start it back up when this process is done. But it's really that simple as far as getting the data onto the USB flash drive. And then next, I'll show you how to boot up into your netbook uh, setting up the bios and everything for that so we'll get to that next so after it's completed you should get this pop up and it's just just really giving you the instructions about how to go about installing the windows onto your netbook but just to give you some idea how long this took it took a pro about maybe 25 to 30 minutes to complete so just keep that in mind so we're going to click ok here and you can go ahead and exit out of this software and now I'm gonna just switch over to the netbook alright so the first thing you want to do is take your USB flash drive that you had your Windows installation data copied onto and plug it into one of the USB ports on the netbook and then after that just go ahead and boot up the netbook and as you're booting up the netbook press the F2 key continuously until you hit the BIOS setup window so I'm just gonna to continue to press it and you should see a screen like so. So let me just zoom in a little bit here as we need to make a couple of changes. So just go over to the advanced tab and under IDE configurations, uh, hit enter. 
and then go down to configure SATAS change it from AHCI to IDE hit enter hit the escape key then under the boot tab what we need to change is the boot settings configuration hit enter change quiet boot from enabled to disabled hit escape again and go to the exit tab and hit enter for the exit and save changes and hit enter again for OK now what you need to do is continue to press the escape key just as you did the F2 key continue to press the escape key and you should see a menu like so and your USB drive should show up here if it doesn't something is wrong so what we want to do is select the USB hit enter let me just zoom out a little bit here so you should see a screen like this and what you want to do let me zoom in again hit enter and you will see first part of Windows XP professional setup second part of Windows XP professional setup depending on which um, Windows operating system you're using but in a way if you just set there it will automatically select the first one so what you want to do is select the first one and you should uh, boot up into this Windows setup screen here So once you come to the screen, what you want to do is it says to set up Windows XP now, press enter. It's going to press enter. And it's examining my disk. And then here I can press F8 if I agree with all these terms or the agreement. Now I need to select the disk that I want to install Windows XP Professional on. I'm going to select this first partition. Press enter. I'm going to say format it. Uh, the quick way to NTFS and then I'm gonna press F everything here really should be self-explanatory this is really the standard Windows setup uh, way of upgrading any type of operating system but just for some of you all I will try to explain it as I'm doing right now so So now it's just copying the setup files to it. This may take a couple of minutes to do a minute or two. So I'm just going to fast forward through this part just so I don't have to drag out the video too long. So as this is about to reboot, make sure when it's starting to boot up again, you continue to press this escape key. But... I'm not going to press the escape key just to show you what happens if you forget to do that. So here is rebooting. And again, here we should be pressing the escape key, but I'm not. And you should see some text like this. If it can focus on it. Uh, well, anyway, it's saying Windows could not start because the following file is missing or corrupt. So... I turn off the computer so I'm gonna press the power key and now again continue to press escape again and again here we want to select the USB so I'm just gonna press enter and it's gonna boot up to that similar screen press enter and this time select second part of Windows XP professional setup press enter and then here you have a couple of options but just keep it as it is and press enter so now we're going to start the second portion of the setup so as you can see it is two portions or two uh, steps that you have to go to to set this up but this is the last step and this again should be very similar to um, what you're what you what you're used to seeing when you just install from the Windows installation disk. So here again, 
it's very self-explanatory from this point. It's, and after this, you don't really have to boot up from the USB drive again. So I, I think I'm just going to cut off the video here because I really don't want to drag out this video too long. But it will ask you for a serial key and everything as normal. So again, after this point, when it restarts, again, you don't have to boot up from the USB flash drive anymore. You're really just set to go. So I'm just going to pick up from that point. Alright, so before I wanted to end this video, I wanted to mention one more last thing. Uh, what you're going to notice is you have no way possible of connecting to the internet. Not by LAN or Ethernet or by wireless. So, for some of you guys who, and ladies who do not know, you are going to have to download some drivers. And what you could have done prior to going through this process is going to the EEE PC website, downloading those drivers onto the USB flash drive because you can't access the flash drive from within my computer but if not just get on a computer that has internet access download those drivers to the USB and I'll try to remember to put this in the description as well where you can download the drivers and you can just go ahead and install it we'll bring the USB back over to the netbook install those drivers and you'll be able to connect to the internet and that's about it so as you can see it, it does take a couple of steps to uh, complete this process but Again, it, an easier method would be just to buy external uh, DVD ROM drive if you don't really want to deal with the whole USB uh, setup and everything. But hopefully that helps most of you guys and ladies out there. And if you have any questions, I'll try to, to explain. But I'm not really that uh, knowledgeable about all this USB stuff. It's just one of those articles I found online and figured I'd just make a video on it. And yeah, if you have any questions, leave a comment, rate, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And thanks for viewing.